comes to the second method of assigning your win load or win load onto your structure, you just have to come back to your load pattern. We are going to modify this lateral load. So modify and I'm going to select exposure from extent of diaphragm. So for this, you have to um, define that diaphragm and assign the diaphragm onto the structure. So let me just close this and just define that diaphragm. Okay, so when we talk about a diaphragm, the diaphragm is just a critical component in the analysis of design um, of buildings subjected to lateral loads. So when it comes to buildings that are subjected to lateral loads like the wind and the seismic forces, you have to define this diaphragm. So the diaphragm, they just simulate the in-plane stiffnesses and strength of the floor and it acts like horizontal plane to collect the lateral loads. And once it collects this lateral load, it distributes the lateral loads to vertical structures like the columns or maybe shear walls or movement frames in the building that resist these lateral loads. So they are just like um, web-like structures that you have to just assign onto your slabs. So first of all, I just have to select my slabs. Let me place it in the plan view. So I'm just going to select these slabs and um, all stories. So I'm going to select these slabs. Okay, so let me place it back in the 3D. So I'm done selecting my slabs now. And I'm going to assign the diaphragm onto these slabs. But first of all, I need to define the diaphragm first. So define so then diaphragms. So we already we already have a diaphragm here that's named D1. I'm going to modify this diaphragm. The name is D1. You can choose to change it or or not change it, not to change it. It's not really relevant. So that's the diaphragm over here. So we have two forms of diaphragm. We have the rigid and we have the semi-rigid. So for the rigid, you have like in plane, infinite in plane stiffness, and it does not exhibit any membrane deformation. Whereas the semi-rigid, it simulates actual in-plane stiffness property and behavior. So when dealing with structures like reinforced concrete structures, you stick with the rigid. And when you are dealing with structures which are quite flexible in a way like um, steel decking with um, concrete toppings or maybe timber or wood, yeah, that for that one you have to stick with the semi-rigid. But ours is a reinforced concrete design, so rigid. And I'm going to click on OK, then OK. So I'm done defining this diaphragm. All I have to do now is to assign the diaphragm onto these shells that I've selected. The reason why I didn't select these staircase shells is because when assigning the diaphragm onto your shell, we do not want shells that are at different elevation. As in that, when I assign it, you're going to see how it's going to look like. But it's like a web-like structure. And I don't want that web-like structure linking from this shell to this landing slab over here because it's going to have different elevation the diaphragm has to be in the same elevation must not have different elevations so once i'm done i can just assign the diaphragm here so it's a shell i'm assigning it to so shell and we have diaphragms over here so diaphragm so these are d1 diaphragm that we defined earlier so all i have to do now is to apply then click on ok so these are d1 so where they are there from, they are just showing our center of mass where the structures, the structure center of mass is and how the lateral load is going to be distributed to their center of mass. But if I had selected these landing slabs over here, you can see the diaphragms will be linking to these landing slabs. Or these dotted lines will be linking to this diaphragm here. That is going to create some form of errors when I'm running my analysis. So I do not want that. That's why I did it this way to have it in just one elevation, the same elevation. So once I'm done assigning this there from, I can just go back to defining my wind load. So WX modify lateral loads and I'm going to select exposure from extent of diaphragm. All of these have been done already. And just like when it comes here, these are windward direction, just like we did earlier. I'm going to input 0 0.8, which is already there. And these are leeward, that's our rear coefficient. That is going to be 0 0.5. So with this, you just have to read your code to understand how the values are. So once everything is done, these are top story 5, bottom story base. And also if you have a parapet wall in your model, you can just check this box and input the height of the parapet. Maybe you have one meter parapet wall, then just input. But in our structure, we don't have that parapet wall, so you can check this box. And once you are done with everything, you can just modify this please. 
okay so if you do not have if you've not assigned or defined your diaphragm or assigned your diaphragm onto this structure yes you are not going to get this part of the values over here they are just going to be blank so before you define the wind load as exposure from diaphragm you have to define your diaphragm and assign it onto your structure so these are the values that diaphragm is giving me so with our wind x that we are dealing we have to exp you have to specify the direction angles over here and the wind x is going to be in the direction of the zero degrees specifying in the x direction and the y direction is going to be 90 degrees and exposure set with is auto calculated so these values here are auto calculated from the program based on the diaphragm that we created or we assigned onto the structure but if you want to input your own values or depth and everything over here you can just select exposure set is user defined and you are just going to input the values here but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to leave it for the program program to calculate that for me so once i'm done I'm just going to click on ok then i think everything is okay now so we just click on ok then we do the same for the y the wind y so we're going to modify this extent of diaphragm everything is okay over here then we change this value to 0 0.5 modify the load over here make it Okay. so make it 90 over here specifying it being the y direction and okay i think everything is done yeah then click on okay okay so now our diaphragm has been assigned uh when pattern has also been defined per this diaphragm so once everything is complete i can now run my analysis to know how the wind is displacing my structure so I'm just going to run this analysis and see how the wind is acting on my structure. So I'm just going to wait for that to be done. Okay, so with this displacement, is the displacement due to the dead load. There is a dead load displacement. When I put place my mouse here, you can see that you can see the extent of deformation of this structure. You can see that the maximum is in the z direction that's negative 2.594 these values are in millimeters so it's not really a large deformation just two point almost 2.6 millimeters downwards so it's i think these are okay so once this model this model like is done you just have to check all the deformations to make sure that the deformations are reasonable so but, but now i'm not really focusing on the dead load now i'm just focusing on the wind load so all i have to do now is also check my deformed shape per the wind load that I created so I'm going to place this in the plan view so we are going to see how exactly how the displacement is going to look like so let me uncheck this contours and we are going to check wind x so wind x we are going to apply you can see that this is where the original position of the building was but once I apply the wind x the building has shifted to the x direction you can see that the building moving away from the original position in the x direction so this is for the wind x you can also check for the wind y and also apply you can see the building also moving from the original position over here in the y direction here and you can also place a mouse here to see the extent of displacement of the building being 6.4 millimeters that's not too much so i think it's okay so then i think you also start your animation to see how the building will be displacing so this is the animation of how the building is going to be displacing once the wind load is hitting the structure in the y direction so it's just going to be moving like this you can also create a combo of the x and y together and they are just going to be displacing the building both in the x and in the y direction which is very rare but you can just do that so once i'm done we're just going to stop this animation and okay so now we are just done um, defining our wind load and assigning them onto the structure so now the important thing to once like checking your story displacement your story shares and that if you want to place all those graphs in your report so you can just come to display and we have our story response plot over here so with this story response plot they can show you the maximum story displacement of your building your maximum story share the maximum story um, drift too so first of all you can just come to your display type and also um, maybe we want our maximum story displacement over here the case or combo you can change that to the wind x so we are now looking at the x 
and you can see that the global x that's the blue and the global y is the red so looking at the graph over here you can see that the building is really displacing in the x direction because we've selected the case to be wx that's our wind in the x direction so our building is displacing most in the x direction you can trace this value down here this is a displacement then in millimeters the value is around 13.5 or 13.6 millimeters you can also look at refer down here to see the maximum displacement over here so this is the maximum displacement for the x in the x direction you can change this one to wind y and you can see that the red one being the y that shows the most displacement of the building so if you want to check for the storage drift too you can change that and check for your storage drift and that's it for the storage drift it is in the y direction i think for the storage drift the formula is um, the displacement of the top story minus displacement of the bottom story divided by the height between those stories so that's how you check for your story drifts and these are the graphs in case you want to print all of these you can also do so and these are story shares so these are why these are the story shares at each story you can trace that and also look for the forces and everything down below here so in case you also want to print this report and stuff so you can also do that from these icons over here so we have print plots you can also do and just print maybe it's already connect, connected to the printer you can just print all of these you can also view all of these and also add it to your report in case you want that in your report so that's it for the win load so don't forget to like and also subscribe to the channel and comment in the comment section if there's anything you want to know about thanks